Hello and welcome back to Streamer Consciousness, a podcast designed to talk about a person's thoughts and conscious reactions to events perceived as a continuous flow. My name is Gideon, I go by Gidawid, here on not only Spotify, but also YouTube and wherever else, Twitch, all the places. And today I am being joined by a very prestigious guest. Uh, she is not only a lead community manager for a very popular game, the moment with millions of players in in their player base but uh also she is uh a good friend of mine which is the nicest thing to bring up more so than anything else she's helped me through uh a lot in terms of uh my development and that's why i'm sort of sitting here right now so uh hello not underscore queen <laughs> hello well, thank, thank you, you for being you. here <laughs> That was a pretty nice intro. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I thought it up by myself. Yeah, uh, uh, immediately. It was written all in advance. That's uh, it. As yeah, every you know. intro is on this channel, every intro is done in advance and not <laughs> on the spot. Uh, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I know. Uh, I know it's uh, after a work day for you as well. So not only have you been going through that, but also you're feeling a little bit under the weather in terms of. Um, how you awesome. are too so yes so i i just wanted to point that out as well um in terms of whether or not this is a, a shorter podcast this week but um we appreciate you being here nonetheless to talk to us all about you so uh let's start there could you give a little introduction uh about who you are and what you do and also uh, let us know your socials as well so i can throw those on the screen all right. Well, I am uh, Gabby, or not Queen, if you wish. Uh, I am a content creator on Twitch. I don't stream very often, but when I do, I have a lot of fun. And uh, other than that, well, I'm lead community manager for Dead by Daylight. So as you said earlier, and uh, yeah, for, for joining me on Twitter, it's uh, not underscore underscore Queen. Yes, I know. I should have you know, reserve the name <laughs> early on, but that didn't happen. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Here we are. Um, what else to know about me? Uh, I'm just a nerd and I have a title. That's it. That's that's. I am the same nerd I was four years ago, I guess, where I was uh, playing game on my sofa and I was working as a freelancer. So that was... Uh, that's no, it. No, yep. Having seen you grow from being just a nerd as you put it, with a, a to turning into a nerd with a title, um, which many consider you a nerd with a crown, uh, I think is oh. is all kinds of awesome, and uh, and yeah, this should, this should be a fun podcast for for people to listen to. Um, let's well, start I hope off. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can get we could get into we could talk all about LA and our amazing experiences that we've had together. Um, but yes, back before pandemics existed. Uh, let's start with, with the first question yep. I've got here, which is, uh, what got you interested in video games? Okay, so way back then, when I was a kid, uh, my dad had this computer, and because my dad works uh, as a uh, database administrator, so we had computers at home, like, really, really early, uh, before everyone on the block. And, uh, well, I started playing games like uh, Commander Keen, and Doom 2, <laughs> and uh, I got really, really, really into Baldur's Gate, then my life turned around and I, when I discovered WoW, um, and there was my social life. So that's it. <laughs> Completely <laughs> that's relatable. What, it's, uh, it's really because uh, we had access and my dad was a fan and he would show us all these games and I would play with my brothers, that was super cool. Uh, we didn't have consoles before I was like way later in my teens. Mm. So it was really PC gaming from the start. Yeah. How old would you say when you started playing video games in general? I guess about five years old. That's when I started. That's why like when I when I play on keyboard and mouse, I'm super, super used to it. A lot of people my age are more uh, controller players because consoles were more uh, often in the houses. Um, but yeah, I, I just, uh, I think the best memories I have was when my brothers and I would just like run downstairs 
to the computer trying to be the first one to tag in <laughs> in the morning on the weekends. And, uh, you know, we would also, I think one thing that got me really into watching games on Twitch is because when we were kids, since we had to play one at a time, we would watch each other play games. Mm -hmm. So while waiting for your turn. So I, for me, it was just natural and fun to watch someone playing as well, as much as playing myself. So yeah, I guess that comes from that too. I think that is a big part that people don't understand is, is there, there is a level of patience that people don't have anymore that came from waiting for a website to load like yeah. the sort of four or five minutes that you might have to wait for just a tiny bit of a picture to to mm -hmm. come into view um i think that's honestly why what made me a lot more patient with video gaming in general and uh i was the same as you in terms of um being uh i was one of four so it was always either taking turns on the single player games or watching somebody else play the game and just sort of sitting there enjoying the fact that, that we were experiencing something together. Um, so there were a lot of moments, I guess, growing up where it was, it, there would always be that hard boss that you couldn't do and someone else really thought they could do it. And yep. uh, then you watch them fail at it and you'd be like, yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's not just me. Um, <laughs> one, of, one of the f really fond memories as well as my, my, little, my younger brother, uh, who is now a programmer, by mm -hmm. the way, uh, was programming Doom levels and was having us try them. And he was super That's proud great. when it was, you know, super hard for us to go through it. Um, and well, because of pandemic, obviously mm -hmm. it's not happening this year, but every year I still do LEN parties with my brothers and my dad playing some Doom 2. So that makes uh, me really happy to hear that yeah. you do that. That's I miss really it, cool. Though. Yeah. Hopefully, obviously, right now, yikes. Yeah, hopefully we can get back to that kind of thing in the future. It, it's been so weird not being able to interact with other human beings, I guess, outside of the brief encounters that you might get going to the shop. Because um, yeah. obviously the UK has been in a lockdown for for goodness knows how long. Um, what's it been like in Canada? Because obviously uh, you're also in Canada. We didn't, we didn't mention that. Yeah, oh, just the detail. Yeah, uh, the uh, slight accent you can hear is uh, is a French Canadian accent. So that's why I, I speak like that. It's, you know, it's not my fault. I try really mm. hard. Anyways, point on. Um, it's been it's been rough. We're still under curfew, uh, and we still have a very small amount of people we can see. And since I live by myself. Uh, that that becomes like boring and even like depressing very very quick mm. um and honestly it's i think the hardest part of all of all this is not being able to project yourself in the future um that's been very difficult i think that's mm. one part for me that's like the year that uh i was supposed to go to tokyo and germany and move around the world uh and meet all these people uh that was kind of stopped and now i we don't know when it's gonna happen again and mm. it's just like it feels like you're just waiting for things to happen and not living your life really yeah so it's kind of a weird feeling right now yeah everyone I, is on the top kind of thing i haven't i hadn't really considered it like that the the idea that the life's been put on hold in terms of you not being able to plan for the future because we don't know what kind of future we're gonna have at this point uh, so yeah absolutely not and and you know i have a fiance that's like just on the other side of the border right now and we can't see each other mm. like, even if we're like less than a hundred kilometers away and it, it's really hard again to try to fix yourself in the future we had plans um now they're kind of on the hold we don't want to cancel all the plans all the time but yeah that's it's been it's been a bit difficult mm. um but obviously video games have been uh on a on the rise because people are stuck home so what do you have to do right <laughs> yeah business has been booming for games multiplayer games especially in terms of being able to branch out and play games with other people um and obviously we've seen growth of of games like fall guys which um maybe wouldn't have had 
the same level of success that they did manage to get because of that. And I think when it comes to streaming, that's been really nice to see more people branch out into other games. And obviously having um, played and worked for Behavior in terms of for Dead by Daylight, in introducing people to a game that I've played for 4,000 hours is so nice. To be able to be like, hey, here's my wheelhouse. Like, this is how you play this game and and how you enjoy it. So, yeah, honestly, uh, I, I guess uh, obviously, <laughs> I work in games. I play games a lot as well outside, and it's one of the things that kind of kept me sane because mm. that's how you get in. Caught someone just rang the bell. So, do you mind? <laughs> yeah, I certainly don't. <laughs> Sorry, the doorbells just rang, so we'll uh, we'll find out what happens here. Where were we? <laughs> the timing. I love that. That that. Yeah, obviously, we'll, we'll, we're going to cut slightly a part of this out, but uh, yeah, Gabby just had uh, had the doorbell go <laughs> at that specific moment where we were talking about pandemic being difficult. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So it's a. Uh... It's actually my friend's birthday and mm. we're having a call later and she's my neighbor <laughs> and uh, she just came by and she gave me something to open during the call. Aww. And I'm like, but it's your it's birthday. Your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I opening any something? Uh, anyways, yeah. So where were we? <laughs> yeah. Um, we were talking about uh, how games have been um, blowing up for the fact yeah, that definitely. during a pandemic, there has been a lot more people that have been playing games together. And that's been really, really awesome to see. Um, how much has that affected uh, your job in terms of uh, more um, more people potentially having eyes on the game? Uh, I guess that we have like a flow of new players, which means that we have to like rethink the way we're talking to our players a lot. Um, you know, just by just something as simple as we share a, we share an asset every week with the perk that are in the shrine. So for context for people who don't know that by the light, uh, that's just a, a perks in the game that help you do things, right? And um, we realized that, hey, we're doing this and we're making, we're, we're putting an, an image out, but there is no association between the name and the actual image so for people that are super new they're not sure what we're showing them mm. right so it's just trying to make to put yourself into a more like hey i'm a new player where do i find this information so we're like reviewing the whole player journey uh where where do they end up what they need to know first so that's really interesting mm. yeah and I think especially having, you know, played the game for as long as we have, the game used to have, well, one killer, but uh, three killers yeah. when, when it first launched. And um, and there was only a handful of perks in comparison to now. And, and now there's six pages of perks that people have to learn and, and be like, what is this information that's, that's going on? Or, or why did I get downed yeah. by this killer because of this? And... And uh, it's definitely been a, an adjustment, or, or I've seen an adjustment from the team having to uh, to access and, and create more for the newer player. So that's uh, that's definitely been an interesting thing. And, you know, I, I always make jokes about, like, uh, hey, you're a CM for DVD. You should name me all the perks, you know? Uh, I can't. I can't mm -hmm. anymore. There's so much <laughs> stuff in the game. When I started, it was so... Like it was already difficult to uh, understand what's happening, but with now with like hex perks and all the things that are added, the mm. new characters, it's a whole big game to learn. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's our it's our goal to try to uh, you know point people the right direction, trying to get them you know give them a little bit of tips on how to deal with the, with the game. Um, yeah, for sure, part of it. What kind of, what jobs did you work before landing the job you have now? Okay, so I did like all kind of different stuff. Obviously, I did work with the public. So I did retail for mm -hmm. a couple of years. Um, when I was in at uni, I was working three jobs at a time. It was a little insane. Um, 
I was also a teen counselor for a little bit. Uh, I did festival work, so like trampoline shows. That's and, awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And before I was hired by Behavior, uh, I have been uh, doing my own freelance work on graphic design for a few years. And, um, you know, like the story of how I got the job. Um, so basically, I was a freelancer and I was a little bored. <laughs> you know, I was doing my own thing and it was working really well. But I was also gaming a lot. And some people were like, dude, you're fun. You should try, try like streaming. I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, maybe I'll try because why not? And then I kind of like had a lot of fun doing it. And I figured, hey, why not? So at some point, I just went to PAX East and I met with DBD Dev and I was like Star Trek was Star Trek. It was so cool. You know, it's like, wow, I'm just this small streamer and I meet with these guys and they're my hero. They're making the game I love so much. And uh, one one month later I received an offer. And when I went to the studio and I met them and they made me the offer. I am um, very seriously, you know, like, hey, you know, let me think about it. Uh, I'll give you an answer in a week about. <laughs> uh, I walk out that door knowing I was going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just I, I was just scared of because my my business was like picking up. So I was scared of making a bad decision on the moment. But I really wanted to do it. It's video games have been passion of mine since like I was a kid. So I was like, hey when is this ever going to happen again that someone's going to go and pick you yeah. out of the crowd? So yeah, Absolutely. that's how I, I got there. I love that that story is based around people saying, Hey, you're really fun. And, and like, it's ended up with you now, like four years later, being a lead community manager for a game that you love like that. That's awesome. Uh, in terms of yeah. encouragement. I mean, apparently some people find me funny. I, I, I mean, you know, I, I guess it takes everything to make the world go around. <laughs> no, I, I find out, outside of a professional setting, I find you absolutely hilarious. And obviously we are, <laughs> we are being as professional as we can be on the show. <laughs> uh, it's really hard because I know you. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I mean, ultimately it's, it's more about showcasing, um, how hard people work. I think is the main thing, but it's so nice to hear that you got a job that you love based on having fun. And I think that's something that people don't always think about. It's, it's also based on, and, and this is something I, I don't think I repeat enough, open the doors. And at some point, maybe something's going to happen because here's the thing. If I did not kick my own butt to mm. go and talk to the devs, they wouldn't even know I exist. So I actually went to them and I was like, hey, that I am a graphic designer. I'm a freelancer. If you ever need anything, I also stream on Twitch. Here's my contact. And it's just happened that it was the moment they were looking for someone. And apparently they went on my stream. They looked at my attitude and everything. And they were like, hey, you know, it, it could be a match. So they offered me the job. They kind of um, put their fate in me. And I'm really, really happy it happened. <laughs> For sure. I, I love that as well, because in terms of me, because I, I used to work with Gabby, for those of you that don't know, um, I was a, I was one of her little babies uh, of uh, a community manager for Dead by Daylight as well. And my story, I guess, from the beginning of that was I wrote a rap about DBD just out of the blue. You know, I, I, uh found it funny somebody somebody was like hey you know you should you should make a funny rap uh about the game and and i took it really seriously and said hey yeah i can do that of course I, i've got musical talent uh and then you played it on a dev stream at one point and people were like this is really cringy um but but <laughs> some some people loved it some people loved it because of how cringy it was and that was kind of the point but we met from there and then uh, I became a community moderator for the game and and then got to work with you as well. So that was another just a, another crazy experience to be sitting here now 
I guess, um, a few years removed from that and, and being able to still have that level of bond, I guess, that gets created from working in an environment where ultimately you're, well, without speaking for you, but, but the job being so based around communication that you have to have such a level of, um, tight knit, close people in that, uh, instance. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, the team grew, uh, a lot, <laughs> like a lot. Um, we now have five, um, community manager on the core game, uh, slash mobile. Uh, and then we have five regional community managers as well. Three people that are doing uh, coordination and a ton of uh, uh, moderators as well. So it's um, it's just been it's just been amazing to see the team grow. Uh, and it's crazy to think like four years ago I was the one CM on the project. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, it. And. And you know when when you say uh, power in numbers, um, I I think it's really nice to see uh, a studio that invests so much in community. Um, so I think on that we're very lucky. And uh, on top of the team here, we also have influencers, managers. We have uh, uh, people that take care of customer support or player support. Sorry, uh, it's just been it's just been growing and it's been great because we've been having more and more impact on the project and on the team so yeah it's great for sure i know you mentioned before about um <laughs> before you were doing freelance graphics design you said you worked doing trampoline shows just then <laughs> yeah. i'd love to know how much that previous experience has helped you at your current job mainly okay. the trampolines no, mainly the trampolines <laughs> Um, I guess with the trampolines, it's mostly about like the whole, I don't know, unpredictability of things. Being able uh, to bounce back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like that. That's better than mine. But um, uh, yeah, there, there's something with the trampoline shows. Like uh, we were doing them at festivals. So whether the, you know, it was raining or snowing or <laughs> there was ice all over the place. Mm. You had to do your show anyways. Gosh. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was really interesting and you had to always, um, adapt to people as well. Cause we, uh, after the show, we would have people try, uh, the trampolines as well. So you had to adapt to whoever you had in front of you. Uh, sometimes, uh, some people would, you know, be very scared so how do you reassure them how do you so i guess that's for me that's that's like the first not the first but but it was it was nice to educate people around that so that's that's a part that i actually took back from from to my job today um you are I one of the most this... reassuring people i know just as a heads up like without okay. a shadow of a doubt i mean that with 100 percent certainty you are Okay. absolutely one of the most reassuring people when when it comes to telling people the advice they need to hear at the right time and i think that is a big thing that i take away from that even though it was a question about trampoline but but realistically <laughs> realistically uh, that that shines it, through what you do so it's it's all about trying to see what the person in front of you needs and ask questions and try to figure out like Okay, what what do we need here? Do you need reassurance? Do you need guidance? Do you need to for me to listen? Because some people sometimes were just afraid and they just wanted to tell you that. And after that, they were a okay. They didn't mm -hmm. have any problem. Um, part of it is also um, so I worked as a teen counselor and there was a lot of conflict resolution and you had to be very very empathetic. Empathetic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my English end of the day, you know, <laughs> um, and and that's something as well that I I brought back to the to this job. It's really important, and it's not only with the community, but inside the studio with my team. Uh, that's that's all things that are super super important. Yeah. 
and obviously like the part where uh, I was a graphic designer, I guess this part brought up uh, importance of communication, hierarchy of information. What do players need to know at what time? Um, and what can we improve on that as well? Mm. So, What was it that drew you to Dead by Daylight as a game? Um, so at the time, I was very sad because uh, Wildstar, which was my favorite game at the time, was uh, was kind of like dwindling, let's say. It was dying slowly. So I was looking for something multiplayer out of the ordinary. And um, <laughs> I started on a free weekend on Steam, and it took me about 25 hours of gameplay before I actually survived. Nice. But, but I want to say that was at mom the moment where Blink... The seven blink nurse oh, yes. things. So uh, that's my excuse. Thank you very much. I mean, much. that's your excuse. I just want to quickly point out that it took me about 40 hours, I think. So oh, okay. just as a heads cool. up, like I was running around the edge of the map screaming, like being no use to anybody whatsoever <laughs> for um, 40 hours. I would hours. drop the palette because I had a prompt, right? <laughs> so it would say prompt space drop palette yeah sure dude like <laughs> i'm gonna drop the palette and um thankfully i had friends that were screaming at me not to do that and that actually helped me learn the game a little bit um and and then i switched to killer for a little bit as well um and i actually realized i actually like playing killer it was nice so uh, that was a game that would offer me two different completely different gameplay in the same game so mm. i really i sticked around i liked it yeah because survivor is third person and killer is first person so it really is like playing two different games when you're when you're playing the other side of it for sure what's an average day in the life of a lead community manager okay um so i have a like a whole answer prepared right but the reality is there's a lot of meetings i'm mm -hmm. talking to a lot of people during the day. So for a CM, the aver average day is to discuss with players, uh, you know, take the pulse of the community, make sure the feedback comes back uh, to the right people. Uh, CMs create content, they search for new content. So all the, 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 the player, uh, the fan art, the cosplay, everything, we're looking for it. Um, as a lead, uh, I don't do that as much anymore, and I'm not going to lie, I kind of miss it. Um, but I do have a team that does it, and I am managing the the team and the big picture of things. Mm -hmm. So um, mostly, you know, working on uh, release campaigns like the last chapter we have, uh, which we can talk about a little <laughs> later. Um, and, and, you know, um, I'm sitting with other department as well to bring up the, the, the word of the community to these departments. So that helps, uh, often, you know, make decisions or, um, you know, having those discussion with a player person in the room. Mm. It's nice. Cause I, I think that's a, part of my job. I think a lot of people, um, have this common misconception that, that they they say hey this is what's going on you should tell these people to fix this and then that that it's just going to be like okay i'll just do that yeah. it, like there's a whole in infrastructure <laughs> of different people <laughs> that create that element of the game or do this do that and you have to talk yeah. to everyone in that I wish instance. it was as simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's also a difference between uh, so the way you get feedback from the community is also I like to say talk of the village kind of thing. So you know if one person is giving uh, somewhat good feedback but no one's backing it up, uh, we're gonna bring it, but it's not gonna be pushed as much as if a lot of people are talking about it. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so obviously, for example, we had a release lately where, um, there was a lot of frustration about the new UI. So part of our job was to make sure that the feedback was, was brought back. And after that, um, having those discussions to prioritize, like which fixes are coming, um, first. And obviously it's not as easy as that because there's a lot of restriction in terms of, uh, 
time that we can put on fixes and uh, we're not the only one deciding on priority. Obviously, there's all kind of different um, things going on in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... It's, it, it cannot always be like, hey, community wants this. Let's do it right now. And it happens in like one patch. Sadly, mm -hmm. that's not the case. But know for a fact that we're listening and we're seeing everything really that's our job we're literally always looking at feedback god imagine imagine how nice it would be for you to be like yeah okay we'll fix that right now and then it just happened well <laughs> like I i'm don't not saying that much power <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but in terms of like you said there are, there are always going to be restrictions and um mm. and things that get in your way whether that be other bugs showing up or or yeah. um management changes or th there's a whole heap of different things that can that can uh st i guess stifle something it's, that could be more sometimes simple. also you it's it's you know you're you're facing some des decisions where it's like i really need this and i really need this but we just can't do both mm -hmm. so there's a decision to be made and both of them are important yeah. you know so you have to make those, uh, and and by the way, I'm not the one making all the decisions as at all, but I'm into these discussions, which is really, really cool. Um, and at some point there's a decision to be made and yeah, there's some prioritization that has to be done. For sure. You mentioned um, about how you spend a lot of your time in meetings and uh, <laughs> that there aren't enough hours in the day basically for all the all the different stuff yep. that you have to do how do you delegate your time effectively between leading a team and also speaking out to the community as well um so thankfully i, I don't have to speak to the community that much anymore mm -hmm. because my time is kind of my my time management has shift more to managing the team and making sure we're covering our bases uh, so other people do that. However, I will step up if it's difficult out there and my team is having difficulties and people are screaming, I will take the screams. I will mm. go there. <laughs> um, I also do a lot of hosting uh, for our live streams. I love doing that. I <laughs> I can do it anytime. It's nice as well because then... Um, you know, we're, ha we're asking the real questions and we have someone from the design team coming up and talking about stuff. So that's nice. Absolutely. Um, I would say that most of my time right now is on more of the big picture planning than uh, direct uh, answers to mm. community members. Uh, that's my team. My team's there for that. That was definitely a big moment, I think, for dead by daylight when it went to more looking at the bigger picture and i get that some people may not necessarily know what i'm talking about but in terms of as soon as there was a plan for the future of the game i feel like the game picked up a lot more traction as well purely based on the fact that people could see the vision and they could see it like mapped out in front of them from from the perspective of somebody playing the game um i think that was that was a big moment i guess for the game itself but yeah i i do love the fact that we have a plan um i'm just always a little cautious about managing expectations about them so yeah that's part of my job as well <laughs> managing expectations it, it's like uh watching a, a pot and making sure it doesn't boil over and you, you you're just there like hang, just turn the heat down a little bit based on on what's going on <laughs> yep. at the time i feel like that's that's a, a good analogy of what you have to deal with um obviously there's, there's a lot of moments where where like you said the the managing of expectations there's a lot of people that want a lot of information and and that stuff comes up at times more so than others there might be quiet weeks and then there might be a week where where certain things people want information how does the CM team balance wanting to share information with the community within the limits of what's possible to share? Um, well, I would say it's kind of like a puzzle. It's it's really difficult. It's hard sometimes, you know, there's an embargo, a deal with a partner, 
or a fix that we're not 100% sure it actually is fixed, so it's currently being tested. Um, some ideas we're juggling internally, but are not set in stones, priorities that are shifting. So as I was saying about managing expectation, it's, it's always like a balance between um, communicating too early. If you communicate too early in, in the process, sometimes you set expectation you won't be able to attain, which mm -hmm. is, is really sad when it happens. Um, and, and, you know, when that happens as well, like people lose uh, faith into the team, which really hurts a lot uh, because we're, we're trying our best to, to, to do these things. Um, but obviously some stuff sometimes is just out of our control. If we have this nasty new bug that we have to concentrate and fix and put a lot of people on, it mm. might put other things a little bit on the back burner. But if we promise these things already, then, you know, expectations are this is going to go out. Mm. Um, for me, transparency comes like in different forms. It's not necessarily about telling everything all the time, but mainly about, you know, anticipating question, giving the information ahead of time. Um, recently, we tried something. Uh, we shared an early design change for one of the perk called Objective Obsession. Mm -hmm. And we made sure that the players were made aware that this is was just a at the discussion point level. Uh, obviously, we're still getting requests for that change right away, <laughs> uh, but it's still in discussion point level. Um, so these are things we're trying. We're trying to open the, dial the dialogue. Sorry, um, earlier we're trying to give some spaces to give us feedback. Um, that's also part of transparency for me. You said um, in there as well about how sometimes it, it, it can really hurt when there's that expectation. You can't necessarily follow through based on that. And I think a really tough part of dealing with that is the fact that you might know information that then you can't share that might make them happy or yeah. fulfill or They're succeed that expectation that they have at the time and and you have to sort of sit there and and take the brunt of what the audience is seemingly throwing at you at the time too yeah yeah that 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 also happens i mean it's the thing is we can always improve communication this is something i i truly believe in uh that you know we're learning from some mistakes we made uh in the past aka um i don't know the ruin change for example that was just a mishap in communication we should mm. have uh probably anticipated it better um and you know we're still humans we make mistakes we try to learn from them we try to improve um and we try new things like showing up a concept of a change way in advance and see how people react to it uh, hopefully that's going to be something we're going to be doing more in the future. I can't promise anything. Depends on how it goes with that one. I think it's, re it's really interesting to hear you talk about um, the design aspects of, of coming up with new ways of uh, engaging with the community in a way that encourages more communication earlier on. And I think that is something that a lot of people could learn from in not just community management, but in terms of uh, how they go about things in terms of streaming or um, hanging out with their friends even. A lot of the time there can be those moments of like a disconnect where the earlier you have the communication, the, the more information you're going to have going into the situation itself. Yeah, and so sometimes, um, and I was talking about the needs of people earlier, but... Um... Sometimes you realize that some players they just need to feel heard. Um, mm. Just giving them a, a little like, hey, thank you for your feedback. Even if you saw that feedback everywhere already and you already noted it like two days ago, right? But just telling them like, hey, thank you for taking the time. Um, sometimes th that, that connection, just that one line will still make them, um, you know, feel heard you're 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 being heard the thing the that 
thing that is very different from now to when I started is that when I started, <laughs> the community was a lot smaller. So the questions were easier to, you know, answer everyone, give a little bit of time to everyone, try to support most people. Now that the community is like millions large, it's a lot harder. Um, so it, it, the, the strategy needs to change in terms of like how we communicate that we know about these things that we're on it. Um, and also sometimes and that's something that makes me um, laugh a little bit, but it's, it's sometimes as well, like we have a, a level of priority of things we're answering to, for example, um, a, that one cosmetic as one default versus like a, there's a crash that cannot, you know, like half of the of the players cannot get in the game. Our reaction time or our um, focus will be a lot different for those type of issues. Mm. So if we have a crash going on, maybe we're going to take less attention to like the smaller issues, which kind of sucks. But at the same time, I mean, we're we're still just trying our best here. You just have to prioritize in those moments. Like again it, I, I understand that you said that the team's a lot bigger than it was but it's still quite a small team in comparison to a lot of <laughs> the, big companies out there the, the team is bigger than it was but the community is like i don't know even bigger I, I even, like <laughs> even bigger yeah comparative <laughs> yeah when i started uh, it was i don't know Maybe twenty thousand people on Steam only. Now we're on all the different platform. We're all across the globe. It's uh, it's a lot different. <laughs> it's it's a sure. lot bigger. Yeah. Uh, this is one I think will satiate some people's interest. But how many separate teams work on Dead by Daylight? Okay, and I'm super sorry for this, but I don't even know anymore. Uh, when I started, there was only thirty five of us on the project. Uh, now we're about. 250 mm -hmm. including like uh the mobile team and everything and um we have team that actually um grew so now for example the community team is part of a player experience team which is including player support influencer management and community management um, that team was not a thing before <laughs> that actually was created as we grew. Um, you know, I don't want to forget anyone. So I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid about, uh, about, uh, naming the teams. So there is a yeah. lot, I think is what I was trying to get at. Yeah, and, uh, a lot of different teams and each team has their focus. And that's also why when, you know, we're talking about priorities or we're talking about um, feedback, that's why it becomes a lot more difficult. I see that a lot uh, around when people are like, well, you know, this person who's playing on this game, um, who's working on this game, they changed it right away when they saw that community feedback. I'm like, yeah. Because if they're working alone or with a very small team, it's easy to turn around and be like, hey, dudes, like we do that. Yeah, we do that. Mm -hmm. it, it was like that or like early on as well. It was a lot easier and a lot faster. But uh, right now, you know, you have to make sure that it fits in every team's uh, objectives. And um, well, sometimes it doesn't. So you have to find compromise and mm. uh, work it out. Uh, we mentioned a little bit earlier about the pandemic, obviously, going on and has been going on for, for well, I guess over a year now, which is yeah. crazy yeah. to think about. Um, how has the pandemic affected the company and what protocol has been put in place to remain safe, but also keep releasing the content that you're releasing? Yeah, so that one's a rough one. Um, for our team... It sounds weird, but it was kind of a blessing because it really allows us to organize better and integrate our regional team like a lot better because now everyone was on the same page, if you wish. Everyone was outside of the studio. You couldn't turn around and just talk to your coworker right away. You have to go through chats. You have to go through meetings. Um, so we set down new ways to communicate. We tried new things. Um, 
I guess on the larger scale, uh, what a lot of people forget is that um, switching an entire studio to work from home. I mean, don't get me wrong. Behavior did amazing on that. Um, and they, they support us at home. Um, but it's, it's for sure. It creates new uh, challenges, right? So new communication challenges. There's a lot of more complexity in things. Uh, so I would say that I'm actually very impressed with what the team uh, managed to pull off uh, last year because um, we still manage all that content and we still manage, um, you know, to, to continue supporting the game through the, the year. So I'm, I'm not really worried about our future on that. That's good um, to hear. Yeah, I, I just sometimes sometimes I wish that people would lower their expectations. It's a tiny bit just because we're still, you know, human and trying to really work hard on this. But I, I understand from an external point of view that like you you want your things to be the best as they can. If that isn't a, a life lesson right there, if I could just get people to lower their expectations a little bit, you know, that would be great. Just Just the smidge, you know. <laughs> yeah um you know uh working from home also affects some people differently i would say uh um so i can't talk for other people but uh, on my end yeah of course i i love working from home but some days i'm really not that efficient mm. and um being on calls on meeting on calls it's a very very different thing than being with in person it's a lot more tiring and it's a lot more a lot less casual if you wish um you know when you're at the studio and you have a meeting you get up from your desk uh you go get a coffee you talk to this person on the side you're talking about your weekend while you wait to get the room um you know there's this whole human aspect of it now it's a bit different you get into a call you're everyone expect like hey we're starting a call we're starting a work now right mm. so if you have calls back to back you're basically always in a mood where it's like work 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 and you have less of this more casual human aspect um mm. to obviously like break that a little bit we have work sessions where we just sit together and we all work on our things but we just hang out um there are things that we do to go around that, but it's still very different. Um, yep. Do you miss going to conventions? I do. As I said before, I was supposed to go to Tokyo and to Germany, and I was really hyped for California again. I think mm. that the year before that, I went to Cali like five times during the year. I was like... Yeah, yeah, this is my time, you know. I, I, I'm just going to LA this weekend. No, but I'm making, I'm joking right here, but I, I really do miss conventions. One thing I don't miss is the busyness of it. Of it. It's it's very, very busy, and um, uh, I might not look like it, but I, I actually am very introvert, so I like to be in my own little place to recharge, and conventions don't allow you for that. Um, so I guess I miss it. I missed, I miss meeting with the people, mm. like players and, you know, uh, content creators and other devs. Uh, I miss that a lot. I, I don't miss the, um, the part where it's, it's, it's a, it's a, like a very condensed few days. That's really hard on me personally. Mm. I mean. I'm not talking to ever for for anyone else here. As someone who's experienced that with you, because um, one of those Californian trips we were we were on together, we got to go and do the PSX, um, the yep. the PlayStation Expo, and uh, and I had a blast. I was that that was the fastest fourteen hours of a day that <laughs> I think I've ever experienced in terms of just talking to people. We stopped briefly for lunch. And I remember that. And, uh, and then we got back to it. And it felt like the time went by in five seconds. Like meeting yeah, players true. that were interested in the game. Teaching people that kind of stuff. Gosh, it was so much fun. And then uh, and then we went out for sushi. And I'd never had sushi <laughs> before. 
<laughs> and you, you, uh, you talked to me through sushi, which is another yep. amazing thing that, that happened. It's like one of my favorite foods, so mm -hmm. you didn't have any choice there. Well, I had chicken. <laughs> I remember that because I was so <laughs> panicky about, <laughs> about sushi. But, um, but that was, again, that's just really awesome to have those, those moments of, uh, I guess experiences with human interaction, like you were saying, in terms of there's a level of of um, personality, like personable people, I guess, and and meeting people puts things into perspective. That it's not just a username, it's not just a player. It's it's a human being, um, as complicated as we all are, uh, that is sitting there taking the time out to play uh, a video game and and I guess seeing those people has been really awesome yeah what blows my mind is when we go on conventions and then you meet this guy that you you have seen at literally every convention before and the person has thousands of hours on the game but they still will wait two hours in line to play dvd on the convention floor yeah. that for me was like it was blowing my mind I was like you guys are nuts it's crazy <laughs> I love that I love the energy. Um, mm. You know, fans will come up to the booth in full cosplay. They will tell you your th their story. Um, to me, it's it's always just. I, I would say that convention kind of like reinforces me and the fact that I feel that I'm at the right place. Um, because by meeting the, with these players, you're you're far away from you know. <laughs> I would say the masses screaming at you on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always like that. I know. And I say a lot that I know it's because you guys really care about the game that you, <laughs> you scream at us. But it's also nice to see people in person and just get this awesome story about how they got into DVD and, you know, just having only positive to, to go around for the weekend. That's nice. I guess it's different having been on the receiving end of the screaming uh, as well. Like yeah. it's as much as like I was just saying that there, there are human, they are human beings on the other end. You're also a human being at the community management team are human beings. The devs are human beings. So like on the flip side of that, there is just so much more that I think people don't necessarily realize when it's just text versus people meeting you at a convention and going, whoa, you are a human being that I am now meeting and I understand that yeah. maybe I shouldn't be screaming at you in, in I've, the way that I, I, I am. Had, I did have people uh, literally apologize to me in person about like, dude, I sent you this kind of message. I'm so sorry. And mm. I'm like, hey, listen, I, I'm glad you're telling me there. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's nice that you take the time to tell me that. I have received some feedback and it's funny because in person people are being a lot more careful with the world the word they choose and and I wish that would transfer to the internet sometimes <laughs> but uh you know it's it's I guess it's all it's always um it's always just a blast to see uh either like fans that are playing DVD on the floor during a convention that will span the entire weekend with us at the booth. And then these fans turning around and showing these new people that never played DVD how to do it, encouraging them and screaming, yeah, you got this, you know? It's uh, it's great that, that that community sentiment in person is really strong as well. Mm. You mentioned uh, briefly there about people coming up in full cosplay um yeah. coming up to you and and all that stuff what what do you think about the cosplaying community of dead by daylight um i think we're really lucky um not only like we have a super dedicated group of cosplayer but they were quick and they're super passionate about all our characters um we tried to like support them by starting a series of cosplay guides. Um, I know that <laughs> I'm talking about it right now and I'm like, Hey, we're long due to add to that collection. <laughs> that makes me think about it. Expectations. Um, <laughs> expectations. expectations <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's something that we want to nurture. I think that, um, by giving them 
uh, some visibility on social media or some activities when we go to co uh, to conventions. Uh, that's that's ways to support them. Yeah, For and sure. it's very very active. And I think that part of it is because of all the amazing characters that uh, our creatives come up with. Um, people just get attached to them, and they they want to portray them. So mm. I think. I think it's great to see that. For sure. <laughs> Some <laughs> people like impress me with their props too. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, hours and hours, like days even, people have spent creating certain props that we've seen in the past. And and uh, cosplay competitions are one of, one of my favorite things uh, when it came to being able to judge yeah, that we, kind of stuff. We did a few around uh, conventions. Uh, we did we did a couple as well on the internet, but then it it becomes it's it's a picture cosplay pictures community. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think we're just really lucky that people care about the the game that much. For sure. To bring this back slightly towards streaming, um, considering this is streamer consciousness, uh, how does it how does being a CM affect your streaming? outside of work okay um that one's a funny one so i started as a streamer before i got the job then <laughs> when i got the job my stream kind of exploded a little bit which i was not really ready for and i had to learn on the fly you know what to say how to say it where the limits were between my job and my actual weekend streams um, and that was very important to me. And I think that um, one of the things that it impacts a lot is, you know, community sentiment. So how's the community feeling at this very moment? And if it's not going very well, it will impact my weekend stream because people will come in and, you know, uh, I will say it's cream at me um, or insult me or um some people rated me in the past um so it does impact a lot on my personal streams but with the community i have my small not queen community and not the dvd community um everyone's like super super understanding um they understand that i'm not there to answer questions during the weekend i'm just there to play have fun and just hang out with them and most people, when they join, they actually are very cool with that as well. So that's really nice. Um, but I always have to be very careful what I say. Um, I know about uh, content like months in advance. Mm -hmm. So it's always, this is always here in the back of my yeah. mind. And if I'm not feeling 100% that day, I will not stream because what if I make a mistake mm -hmm. and that costs me my job? So that's like, a whole level of um, of how it affects like streaming outside of work, and obviously, I always get those DVD questions all the time. Of course, um, but I I am very very strict with that rule. Like, dudes, I'm on my weekend. If you want to know about DVD, just go on the official channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you definitely stream other things. Other than DVD yeah, as I, well, it's it's not just that by I daylight. I stream, um, stream the forest lately, uh, some uh, Far Cry. Um, now I'm looking at Valheim maybe a little bit <laughs> because I've been playing Valheim a lot. <laughs> and um, but yeah, I I stream mainly DVD, but I try to switch at the end of my stream uh, often. So yeah, because, you... yeah, I play other games. Wow. Surprise. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you play dare other things? <laughs> um, what's that game that uh, I'm trying to think of the game that you you always loved watching me play? Uh, something about trucks. What's the what's cluster the truck? Trucks. Cluster truck. That's oh it. Oh my god. Yeah. That's freaking hilarious. That uh, that game <laughs> did things to me in terms of the lasers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on in that game. If people have never played it, you are you're trying to jump across trucks while there are lasers and other things trying to. Uh, kill you and uh, that did things to my brain that that I I, I, I barely knew what was going on uh, so that was a uh, I, I, I might have to replay that 
again at some point. Um, so, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> from my from my incredible segue there, because uh, life can be a cluster truck from time to time. If you could go back four years and give yourself one piece of advice, what would that piece of advice be? Okay. Um, I guess I have multiple of them, but uh, the first one is you cannot do everything by yourself. I have tried to do a lot by myself um, and I have had a lot of pressure, a lot of things put on my shoulders and I have to accept that it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to get help and, you know, let go of some things because I was clutching things like this. Um, and I guess be patient and not just with others, but with yourself. Um, you know, in four years, I have learned a lot and I got frustrated at myself very often and I was not really patient with myself and allowing me that, you know, learning curve and that the same empathy I can give to others. Um, that, that I, I, that's what I wish I knew for well, four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been so interesting, like hearing all of the guests speak on that kind of topic. Um, Nogla, who was on the podcast a few weeks ago, he, I brought up about being kind mm -hmm. as one of the things. And he said, you need to be kind to yourself as well. And that really, again, just resonated with me that that a lot of the time we aren't, we might be patient with other people, we might give our all to other people, but but we need to be aware that that we need to give ourselves the same kind of respect. Yeah, someone, uh, so my, my new director, she, she told me something like, hey, would you say that to a friend? And then, you know, it makes you think, well, no, I wouldn't, then why are you saying that about yourself? Okay, well, that's a really good question. I have to go think about that. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was just kind of recently. So, yeah, I'm still learning. Mm. When it comes to mental health and, um, you know, being in the job that you are, how do you mentally stay on top of what you do? Being, again, in, in a stress-filled environment, for, for lack of a better term, considering there are so many meetings that go on. Like you said, you, you've learned to be patient and stuff. How do you stay on the top of your game in terms of top form? It's rough. Some days I don't, honestly. And I think at this point when I don't, that's where I've learned to go and get help. And, um, you know, bouncing ideas to someone else and being like, hey, uh, I, you know, my head's not in it right now. I'm going to, into a discussion with these points. Do, does that make sense? Please help me, you know. Um, accepting that you're not at your 100% all the time. And, um, well, you know, community management player facing uh, positions, it's 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 a difficult one. Um, and And I don't want to not i don't want to say it as you know trying to be a victim but we are getting a lot of crap um lots of threats um and there is so much you can you know uh, harden to if you wish uh there's so much you can deal with and learning when to tap out is super important because you know they're like okay i just can't do this right now can someone pick it up for me, tap out. Um, so we have this thing in the team where you can tap out if you can't deal with anything. Um, this is, yeah, this is a difficult one, honestly. It's, wow. uh, yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not really afraid to say it. I see a therapist on a very regular basis. Um, it's not only for that, it's just to work personal growth as well but uh it did help me a lot for how to deal with um you know a lot of flaming that we get around um and especially when it's attacking 
specific people on the team that I know or myself or, you know, coworkers or it's, it's not, it's not an easy thing to deal with. Um, I would say, uh, but again, that's when things are bad and there is those moments are less for me, less big than the good moments. And that's also something I need to not forget because naturally the humans will look at, you know, there, there's 10 things that happen. One was negative. I'm going to remember the negative one. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying right now to switch my focus on the more positive ones. That's what I'm trying to do. For so. sure. I'd say somewhat life is like a trampoline, if you will. But there's a lot of moments where there are ups and downs. And, uh, you know, sometimes things will be up in the air. But you need to recognize that that you 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 will be able to... Again, I think what's important there is is you talked about being able to maintain um, a level of um, stability in finding when's the right moment to tag someone else in, and mm -hmm. and I think that's what is so important about having a bond with people and being able to to recognize that not only the things that might be being said aren't about you individually but the fact is that you are you are the sum of your parts in terms of you are the person that that, that you want to be you're a lot more than what people say about you and you need to be able to believe in yourself as much as you believe in other people yeah so. it's a uh, it's also uh you know lifetime work <laughs> for sure we'll get there one day in terms of uh in terms of that um to to go slightly off topic i guess from uh from where we were at um do you have a favorite horror film okay uh favorite's a really hard one um for me in the recent years get out was like for me freaking terrifying mm. and you know of a, of a sort of uncanny valley and then you switch to a really, really dark part path. Um, made me feel a little bit like the Midsummer vibe, a little bit, kind yeah. of. Midsummer is um, one of my girlfriend's favorite films, and it terrifies me that it's one of her favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. It's, it was pretty it's awful. <laughs> um, for classic R's, I can't go around Halloween. Halloween was one of my favorite classics mm -hmm. and then okay there's the ring the ring is just like legit traumatized me i hate those you know like crawling movement <laughs> like weird sketchy like oh mm -hmm. it, it's it, it creeps me out so much and that's the only movie i refuse to watch again <laughs> ever That's i know fantastic I, I know it sounds weird because everyone's like well come on it's just you know it's just a horror movie it's just no dude like i can't watch anything but that one i i just can't the crawling the whole creepiness no no no, no. <laughs> what's so fantastic about that is then i would love to talk about the fact that in terms of uh you know the the creepy movements and stuff you voiced the spirit in, I know. in Dead by Daylight. Let's have a little talk about that. She's not crawling, though. True, she doesn't crawl, but she is. She definitely has the, like, sort of, like, jagged movements and stuff in terms yeah. of her... Uh, she's not crawling. Detachable arms, I guess. She's a bit like Rayman, you know? She... <laughs> <laughs> her Dude, arms aren't connected. That was game I was playing when I was a kid. <laughs> I loved Rayman, um, yeah, it was a great game. Yeah, but yeah in I've terms of what was it like it. being in the booth and uh, and all that stuff. Tell us about it. So I am definitely not an actor. So it was difficult because it was I was asked asked to act something. And I was like, I don't know, dude. I was just screaming in the mic. I <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want. And then it was like, okay, more ah, more uh, more, you know. And I had to follow instructions without having one ounce of a notion of anything else but hey i can scream in the mic i guess mm -hmm. um i think my favorite part was the mori because we had the animation in front and i had to act it mm. and that one i really 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 had fun because you had to be the spirit when you were doing this and 
that rage thing at the end, the rage scream, it was really me getting annoyed because it was like the freaking 40th time we did it. <laughs> <laughs> and and what's funny is like how the boots are, are, are laid out at the studio is that like, there's people working right next to it. And it is obviously soundproofed but mm -hmm. you know so much you can soundproof if someone scream at the top of their lungs of course so there's always like the kind of walk of shame at the end when it's like you open the door and everyone's like <laughs> good job <laughs> nice scream I'm in the mic. <laughs> okay bye <laughs> that's phenomenal i actually remember that as well you told me i, can't, I guess it was the week before you said you you mentioned hey i'm gonna be a voice in the game and uh i i very specifically remember telling you to throw in some cat noises if you could at some point some they kind of meow exactly which is a real shame i tried but they didn't want it's a the real cat. shame because you're really good at cat noises in terms of uh <laughs> meowing and various things like that and um you do have cats in the back how many cats do you have uh, i have two there's mm -hmm. one sleeping there and the other one is sleeping on the other side have you always had pets uh actually no i've had pets only well i had a gerbil but i don't know if that counts <laughs> when i was a kid still a pet uh, i guess but then the orange one right mm -hmm. there uh he is now 13 years old so i have had him for almost as long as i've been out in apartments by myself so the second i was out of my parents house i was like hey it's pet time <laughs> <laughs> because my parents didn't want any pets so yeah and what are their names you've got basquiat um, and... i got basquiat here and i have pebbles but hmm what well he's sleeping <laughs> over there but I that's don't, okay I don't... yeah we'll, we'll let him sleep um i've had the 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 glorious moment of meeting basquiat and it was one of my one of my crowning moments was being able to to hold him and I was going to be so excited because he's always so cuddly and stuff and he hated me with a passion <laughs> he he would not yeah. he would not look happy he did not want to stay near me or anything like that it was like it's meeting like... it's like meeting your heroes and then realizing that they are too busy they, they they've got something else on that day <laughs> so um i think it's uh, so i got him at the at the SPCA and I, I think he was abused by a man, maybe, because like, mm. he was he's really scared of men and children. Mm. Like, very, very scared of both. And I think there's something with it. I don't know. Bless him. Well, I'm a big like man a... child, so that's probably the worst combination <laughs> for, <laughs> for him to have to deal with. But uh, he is one of the most adorable cats on the planet, for sure. I guess when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to talking about uh, Dead by Daylight, um, where do you see the future of the game? Okay, well, you know, I it's not really for me to say, obviously, mm -hmm. but I'm really hoping for for myself with a with a lot more years on the project, and you know, DVD is really a passion project, and I would say kind of become my life a little bit. Uh, I. I know a lot of people frown about, you know, making your job the center of your life, but man, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> so it doesn't feel that bad, you know? And I I think we have something really special with the community. Honestly, I'm really not ready to let go of anything like that. So I'm I'm hoping that there's a future where we can make the community shine brighter and hmm. um and and pick up all these pick up all this positive and make this positive shine even brighter yeah for sure absolutely it's been so interesting talking to you not only just to get to catch up but in terms of hopefully it's opened up more people's eyes to the fact that um it, it's it's more being a lead community manager isn't just being able to tell someone to fix a game and <laughs> and no, there is... no, because everyone knows I'm supposed to do that. That's it. I thought exactly. I thought we uh, I thought we agreed on that. It is established that 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 Queen is the one to fix the game. Uh, that's that's been established for many many years. But I really wanted to to talk to you and have you on the podcast because, um, not only to catch up, but in terms of 
being able to showcase that there is a lot of hard work that goes into what you do and ultimately it, it's not an easy job role to be in and i think it's it's great to be able to to highlight for those people out there and i would love to to ask you um if there was like one piece of advice you could give to somebody that was trying to get into the industry in some capacity or or has been thinking about community management or anything like that is there a piece of advice that you'd be able to give people out there that might help encourage them like you said before about opening doors and not closing those doors at the beginning of the podcast um you know i i got into the industry into a very like lucky streak i would say like yes i opened the door but i was also at the right time at the right place i guess so i i don't know if my if if i can actually give advice on that but basically um build up your build up your 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 knowledge into what you think community would be uh learn about what is community as well as really important that it, it's kind of a new ish um discipline if you wish uh, it's when i say new it's like it's not as as old as a job for a programmer or a designer in in the space so it's always moving it's always changing there's always new terries um there's always new trends so keep at it and make sure that you know about these new things and i guess again open doors uh try your try try because if you don't like it's not gonna happen anyways right you uh, you said about luck but i mean a, a lot of the time you create your own luck and if you hadn't have been there in the first place at pax saying hey um here i am and, and this is what i do you might not be sitting here right now yeah. talking on the greatest podcast of all time in the future uh, <laughs> um yeah i i guess that's that's part of it it's uh putting yourself out there is very important um you know if if you're if you're playing the game getting in, included like getting uh invested in the community is important as well um mm -hmm. and i guess as much as the the job is i i don't know how to say that uh let me think mm -mm -mm. um as much as the job grows like the expectations are higher for new people joining in as well so i again i was lucky to get in and at the time and then the way i did um but i know people that have been working for years in the industry before getting there as well so um it's i guess uh, if you make it a goal it's it's like any other thing you have to build towards that goal yeah you definitely showcased your kind and um responsible personality uh and i think that in itself probably highlights to a lot of people why you're in the position that you're in and um and i think that's a, a great set of um traits to have so there's one last question that i ask every guest which is would you come back on the show oh, yeah sometime? definitely yeah sure awesome mm -hmm. it's always always great to great to hear um yeah we, we we'd love to have you back at some point in the future to to hear where life takes you i guess in in many respects ooh, and uh, ooh, i have something something i never i never do before oh because because i'm 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 you know i have this little imposter syndrome but this year this year i got an award oh wow yeah i got an award congratulations Let me, i'm gonna gamer. full screen you here and um it's an indie community manager of the year so i'm very proud of that one and it's too so shiny and just, it's an just physical hold award. it up again close to the i is it in the yeah room? that's beautiful Wow, congratulations. Yay, thank you. <laughs> so uh, I had to shameless plug it. Of course. Um, and you have, yeah, you have been on other podcasts as well, haven't you? In terms of, or panels, I should say, talking about yes. um, more in terms of game development and, and being a community manager, if you wanted to talk about that. 
Um, yeah, so uh, I did a panel with other uh, people from the our industry, which was amazing. It was uh, managed by the smallest burb. <laughs> and um, so I was really lucky to do that. I'm having a couple of things going out soon that I can't talk about yet. <laughs> and um, I'm also doing a panel on community with um, a user research coworker. Um, which is going to be super interesting as well, but that's in French, so uh, good luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you never know; there might be some people out there watching that. Uh... But uh, I'm always down to uh, to join panels, or if people want to hear about what I have to say, I guess. Of course, uh, that's kind of my next step. I would like to, I would like to expand to doing panels and, mm. and conferences. Yeah. Lead community conference manager. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> that takes a lot of energy for me to talk in front of people for sure I, I still do it absolutely when, when i'm prepared it's it's fine do you just want to give us one more rundown of your uh socials if people want to find you on anywhere uh yeah you can uh find me on twitch at twitch.tv slash not underscore queen Okay. <laughs> or on Twitter at uh, not underscore underscore queen. Yep. Awesome. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an, it's been a pleasure uh, not only well, getting to catch up with you, but, but to uh, hopefully shine a light on the fact that um, there's a lot more uh, going on in terms of, uh, of, of people caring about, the community and and looking after it and maybe a lot of people seem to see on the surface even though you do so much work um all of the team do so much work there i think it's it's great to highlight the fact that you um you genuinely care and i, I think that that shines through in what you do so thank you so much for that it's been uh it's been great talking to you basquiat i hope you enjoy your sleep pebbles as well i hope you enjoy your sleep and uh uh, if people want to find me as well, I'm on Twitch, uh, at Gitterwid, uh, also on, uh, YouTube and all those other places as well. And Streamer Consciousness is available on Spotify. It is also available. Uh, we are on Twitter as well at Caster Minds because Streamer Consciousness was too long to fit in a Twitter at, um, so... Uh, you can find us there and also we have a patreon now as well and i'm incredibly uh pleased to say that we have uh, i think eight patrons now uh so thank you guys so so much for supporting the um podcast as well and uh yeah i will be back next week with another guest and uh thank you once again for joining me and uh we'll see you in the next next episode goodbye <laughs>